Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Ham Nuggets. This is going to be an interesting show because we are going to learn together how to do fox and hound mode on WSJTX using FT8. And this is so we can all figure out how to do the de-expedition hunt for the upcoming Bouvet Island. It's 3, 3Y0J, right, Jim? Yes, that's right. That's right. 3Y0J. 3Y0J. Yeah. So Zero Otis came J. on the show on Saturday on Coffee and Ham Radio's YouTube channel. If you guys haven't seen that, I don't know. But anyway, uh, and talked all about this fantastic de-expedition to Bouvet Island, which is just off the coast of Antarctica and apparently is named after some Frenchman from Norwegian lineage. Don't, I don't know. But we're going to figure out how they would do it and not really. Jim, oh, hold on. The crowd's going wild. Jim is not wearing blue. What the, <laughs> what? What the hell is James wearing? <laughs> is that urban camo? It is urban camo. They He's blending in with the city. Illinois. Awesome. Uh, it's and Lou saw me first. I was like, "You mean you can see me?" I thought I was invisible. You are invisible. Todd says he's studying for extra, and there's a question where fox and hound is one of the wrong answers. I think it's either satellite or EME. <laughs> that isn't Jim. <laughs> I believe it's me. Why is there just an empty seat on the right side of my screen? Right, John? I don't know. <laughs> what are these voices in my head? I don't know. I don't get it. All right, right. so I'm going to share out my screen. I am running a DX Commander. I'm at 110 watts. I'm running a Kenwood TS570D. So we're on uh, modern boat anchors. But at what point, like I know what a boat anchor is, but at what point does a radio become a boat anchor? Is there like, is it today minus 20 is when it happens? Because this radio is from 1996. If it has tubes, it's a boat anchor in my opinion. Hey, Steve. So tubes what are for we guitar amps and history? Other than that, they have no function. So it's just it's just retro. It's a retro radio, vintage. Is, have, have you got tubes? Is it tubes? Really? No, no, no. This is all solid state. Okay, that is just retro. Then that's right. It has a serial port. There is no USB port on this. <laughs> that's retro. Yeah, I, I have to put it. I plugged in the serial to USB converter and it didn't work. And I'm like, okay, okay, dig deep, dig deep. No modem call cable. No modem call adapter. Up the magics. Call yeah. up the magics. I had, to, I had to pull that out of out of 1997 or something. If it's heavy right. enough to anchor your boat, you have a boat. It's, this thing is 15 pounds. It's it's the size of an ICOM 7300, and it's 15 pounds. It's it's got a big, huge heat sink inside. Today minus 40 is is what Andy says boat anchors are. All right, so somewhere buried in the menus of WSJTX, I'm going to go into file. I'm going to go into settings, advanced. Is it in advanced? I don't see it in advanced colors. And uh, if anybody no, go, go back, go back, go back. Special operating. Oh, there it is. Special operating. Check it. And then it becomes available. So I'm yeah. going to be the Fox. So Jim fire yours up. Well, first off, I guess before we do that, let's turn that off. Jim, I'm going to call. I'm on 20 meters. I'm going to call and see if you can hear me. All right. Well, let me get to 20 meters then. So I was fire. On, I was on 40. Let's, let's verify that we can make a contact before we try to make a contact and never could have in the first place. VFD display is a boat anchor. I have one of those. It's also a Kenwood. I can't wait to get that one fired up. I've turned it on. I think it has low power out. I think it's it's tired. So after the 570D gets uh, patched up, repaired, and right. videoed, then we'll get onto the 480. Hit it. What is the idea of using Fox and Hound? Ron, I'm going to try my best to butcher this explanation as best as I possibly can. Because I already butchered it once just talking to Jim a few seconds ago. So I know it's coming. W1BUS is trying to contact me now. Thank you very much, W1BUS. I know you're watching. But uh, on a D expedition, if the remote station, the station that you want to contact, that all of us want to contact is running on 14074 as an example and everybody's coming back on 14074 it's way too much noise they can't hear anybody at all because of all of the intermod it just sounds like mumbling especially on a cw station if you ever if you have ever witnessed or heard a cw pileup it's just pure nonsense like voice pileup is bad but 
it's pure nonsense on CW pileup and FT8 pileups probably even, well, I don't know. FT8 pileup might be okay because you've got 3000 Hertz divided by 50. So there's enough slices in there maybe, but the object where everybody's at, right? Yeah. So the, the object is got to WMBUS minus 14 cent minus two received. The object is that they're going to be listening on a frequency, probably in the extra portion of the band that you don't have the rights to transmit on, which is fine. Um, sorry, they're going to be transmitting. So you can hear them because you can listen wherever you want. That, that part's free. You can then transmit at 14088. I'm making up numbers here for the purpose of the exercise. So you're transmitting on 14088 as the hound. They're listening at 14074 as the fox. And then they'll work every station that's on 14088. And then they'll move to 14087 and work every station on 14087. And then they'll move down to 14086 and work every station there. And so on and so on until they run out of general portion of the band. And then they'll jump back up to some other thing. Usually it starts at plus five. And you can kind of... If you pay enough attention, Roly, Roly ZL1BQD would be the expert on this because he's done a lot of de-expeditions. If you pay enough attention, you can tell where they're going to go next in the frequency by listening to the last two rounds and automatically jump to that future spot and be there when they get there and be the first person to, to receive the call. So Jim uses pliers to gain that extra octave to break through a pile of <laughs> nice. Randall, uh, Randall says he hears me in Texas, uh, KR5 EEE. Randall, I have a direct route to Texas almost all the time. I can almost always make a Texas contact. Jim, did you get your WSJTX fired up yet? Oh, I've been fired up, son. Do, are you, are you seeing, are you hearing me? I haven't seen you yet. All right. I'm calling CQ again. And if we don't do it on 20, we'll move to what's next 40. We'll try 40. Yeah. We probably need to move to 40. 20 seems to be quite dodgy for me. Yeah. Cape Cod CNC says he's lost already. Paul, hopefully by the end of this, we will be a little less lost. I'm not 100% sure on it. That's my understanding of how it works. But the object is that they're, they are transmitting on a clear frequency that no one else is transmitting on. And they are listening on a bunch of upstream frequencies that a lot of other people are trying to reach them on. They are trying. I think he said he'd be there for two months. Is that right, Jim? Yeah. They're, two? uh, well, the, yeah. I think the, I don't think they're on the island two months. I think they're on the island like three or four weeks. Yeah, the like the whole is, the whole expedition is two months. Yeah, yeah the whole the whole sojourn is yeah. is two months long. Yes. So in three weeks, multiple stations, multiple bands, multiple modes, they're anticipating two hundred thousand contacts twenty four hours a day. Not two hundred thousand every day, but over the three weeks that they're operating, two hundred thousand contacts because right. they're going to be operating right. multiple modes twenty four hours a day. I, I'm not seeing you, buddy. All right, I'm going to move to 40. So let's change to 40. QSY, standing by QSY. And we will call CQ on 40. Let me go back to presenting my screen so people can see that I'm calling CQ on 40. Those are some leftover 20 decodes. Let me get rid of those. Oh, there you go. You can see me now? Yeah. And Adam, K6ARK, you are correct. There is a soda summit there. It is an IOTA site. It is also a POTA site. So we we told Otis on Saturday to make sure that he uploads his logs. And I offered to help in any way I could with the log uploads to the POTA. And I can probably reach out and touch somebody for soda. Because the last time I uploaded my log to soda, I got the date format backwards. Instead of day, instead of year month day it was year day month or something like that whatever the other format was and um not good all right kc5av is trying to contact me but you can see me what's my signal strength down to you jim can you tell well you done scroll past hold on mm -hmm. i should have looked at it when i saw it now i'm scrolling looking for i don't you. know why i erased that thanks for the link adam <sighs> Just keep, so, I, I don't see it. It's moving before I can see it. Okay. No worries. Lots, uh, lots of traffic. So John amateur radio on the air is saying, I remember one station on the Ayland Island. I probably said that wrong. That followed the normal FT8 QSO by TXing Fox. So we might wind up seeing that when we get into Fox mode, I'm going to go back into enable. I'm going to call CQ. So you should, uh, 30 seconds. You should hear me. 
never been activated. Uh, Adam, I don't know. I think it's been activated, but probably hasn't been reported as a summit. Not arguing with you. I just that's just my thought. Because I think there's been a couple of de-expeditions and and once wasn't there one that got like thirty thousand QSOs or seventy thousand QSOs, Jim? Yeah, there was, and that was back yeah. in the seventies or eighties, I think. Yeah, so it's just never been uploaded, right? It might even predate Soda. I don't know when Soda started. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, there you go. I'm getting you at minus <clears throat> minus seven. Iowa, no, no KM nine G in Iowa. All right, I see. I don't see you responding. Are you trying to respond? Oh, no, I didn't know we were doing that. I just yeah, uh, we got to make one successful QSO first. Okay, I got a little bit of a pile up on the screen here, but you're not in it. Yeah, I know, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> Damn it! Stop it! There we go. It'll call again. Yeah, I just started calling you, and I'm on even. I'm transmitting on even. I see you. You're zero. All right, plus zero. Always keep a positive attitude. <laughs> Strive for the middle, Jim. <laughs> That's the place to be. Nobody, nobody can see me. Nobody can hear me. I just kind of blend in with my urban camo. I get you at minus twelve. See, I'm wearing, I'm wearing northern camo, up north camo, <laughs> or hipster camo, right? Either one. Yeah. Either one. All right. So I got gotcha. you. Report sent plus zero. Report received minus 12. Excellent. Okay. So let's jump over to settings. I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to be the fox and then you can be the hound. Please choose another dial frequency. WSJTX will not operate in fox mode on the standard FT8 subbands. Okay. So where do I go? All right. Let's see. I am turning the dial and it hasn't pulled. I'm going to go to 7080. All right, I'm at 7080. DX expedition mode, hound operator calling the DX. Okay, so I am, you can see this little red box showed up magically for the first time. Fox has to be under 500 hertz. Randall, give me some more information on that. So you're on 7080. So should I switch to 7080? Is that what you I'm should hearing? you should switch to 7080? Yeah. And, and we'll try it. I don't know 100% about the answer. All right. Uh, All right, I am transmitting. Okay, should I be listening? Because it said hound sh operator should be calling CQ, but I'm not doing anything. I took oh, the hound time. should be calling CQ. Well, I, I see you. Somebody's transmitting something. That's me. Okay. So we have verified that a path between Jim and myself works. So if everything works well, this should happen somehow. So on the left-hand side, I see KN4YCD, WB8VNH, KE3QZ, and KI5FTB. So I'm going to double-click on Jim, and you disappeared from the list the second I did that. Oh, I'm going to double-click on all of them. It's giving you a plus 16. I think plus 16 is the offset of the transmission to you. Oh. Am I transmitting all of you at once? Oh, that would be amazing. Hmm. Adam, I'm ashamed of you taking months to upload a POTA log. I did. I, I took you. like a. I got you at minus eight now. Sorry. Nice. Go ahead. I see Jason W five APA. Uh, Adam, I I took like two weeks to upload my soda log. Did it wrong. Didn't know I did it wrong. And then took another month to upload it properly. So I'm right there with you. All right, Don I see says Fox IPA. can work four at once. That's what it looks like, Don. This yeah, is pretty slick. That's what I'm seeing on my display. All right, can you share your screen out, Jim? Uh, just yeah. the just the window. Are you running SDR control or are you running real WSJTX? No, I'm running real WSJTX. Uh, let me move things around. 
I've got like three monitors here, actually four. But if I want to look at the camera at all, and y'all don't want to see my ear hair, I got to kind of move things around because oh, no one wants you. to see my ear hair. Please, I mean, yes. really. All right, so right. Jody, with the with the pro tip, what Randall was talking about was your TX frequency is recommended to be less than 500 hertz. I'm at 300, which is good. Hounds are 1K on up. Excellent. All things radio, K4YAG. Welcome. Okay. Oh, I want to see what your screen looks like. That should be the one on the screen, right? Yeah, yeah I just I maximized my screen so I could read your screen. So... My radio, so this is interesting, WSJTX, well, it just turned off the button, but the radio wasn't transmitting. I don't know. That's weird. This is pretty cool. So all you had to know, all I all I needed to do was, was pick a frequency and go to it. I picked 7080 because it was clear on my side. And I went into Fox mode and I hit enable TX and everybody heard me and started responding. On my screen, on the left-hand side, I see a list of stations that are stacked up waiting to receive my call. And according to Don and 5 skt I can respond to four people at one time. So I can multi-thread that, which is pretty slick. So on my end, I'm, I'm furiously working four at a time. On your end, you have to know my frequency. You have to be in hound mode and then just listen for me, it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> Turn up. I'm going to gain a little bit. So on my side, let me get back out of here and change back to my screen. On my side, right at the bottom, you can see I'm receiving now. When I go into transmit mode, it's last time it said transmitting two slots because I'm working two stations at once. So that's pretty cool. Kurt, okay, you are, and Don's you are saying you all call out to me. See at the bottom it says transmit two slots? Let me see what my waterfall looks like. Come on, waterfall. Kurt, you may be a fellow geezer, but I don't oh, think you're old enough to be my dad. I have I have new stuff to share. <laughs> so you can see my original waterfall from 7074, and then this is my fox and hound waterfall. So I can see a couple of hounds chasing me. It says callers 10, callers 9, in progress 4. So I just finished. It gives me a rate. Oh, that is sweet. This is pretty cool. Oh, this is this is a fun show, folks. Thank you very much. I am honored that you were all here to to have fun and play along because this this would not have been this would not have worked without all of you at home. Let me go back into the main window, and I've got nobody new calling me. Randall saying the hounds need to set their transmit the red bracket to an empty slot. Yeah, so what Randall's talking about is, let me and get back to my is, waterfall. Mine is all the way over on 2400. At the top of your screen, you have a green bracket is where you're listening and a red bracket is where you're transmitting. You all can see my mouse moving around here, kind of drawing attention to it. If you left click, I'll, you'll move the listener. If you right click, you can move them both. It'll say set RX and TX offset. I don't want to move mine because I'm supposed to supposed to be in one spot here. And Dusty says he just read the manual. Dusty, uh, please present your ham card. We're going to clip the upper left corner. You lose have three corner, corners son. left. You lose a corner, son. You read no manual. manual reading. No manual reading. Okay. So they're asking to make you the fox now. I have eight calls in progress. So, Jim, you're done, right? Yeah. So why don't you pick a different frequency, 7081? Okay. No, you, you got to be three up from All that. Right, so so 7084. Eight four, yeah, yeah, and then when I'm done these calls, I'll jump over there and try and work you. All right, so I need to make the change in here. Fox, Cape Cod, Yellowstone can wait. We're making history right now. Okay, well, I got the little log thing came up. Ron, and then do is I need correct. to? Do I need to? I just need to monitor somebody else. The hounds are transmitting, not me. I'm just monitoring. I clicked enable transmit. I don't know that it did or didn't do anything. I think everybody might have just jumped on right away. Okay. So, what does your message on your screen say? Fox mode warning. Please choose another dial frequency. Right. WSJTX will not operate in Fox mode on the standard FT8 subbands. So because I turned my VFO manually. The, well, that's what I did too. 
Oh, and WSJTX changed it back when I turned on transmit. What did we say? 7084? 7084 for you. All right. See, he's still not changing. Can I manually enter a frequency? I don't think I can. I think I'm done. I can't tell. Caller eight in progress zero. Okay, so I am now done. That's cool. All right, the radio's on seven oh eight four, but WSJTX keeps jumping around. So I don't, I don't know what the deal is there. That's got gotta... an H for hound mode. Settings hound. Okay. 7084, I'm looking for you now. Well, yeah, but if you look at my screen, the WSJTX is on 7079. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't either because the radio is on 7084. Okay. Okay, now it thinks it's on 7084. And I've got the little... You're um, in... Yep, you're in Fox mode like you're supposed to be. Yeah. Hey, Arthur, evening to the to the West Coast from almost the East Coast. And I saw somebody said there were a new ham in here. Mine moved to 7085. I mean, the radio, yep, the radio's on 7084. And you've got people calling you. So all I did was I double-clicked on that okay, caller on Randall. the left. There's there's Randall. I just clicked Randall. All things radio put an at sign in front of their name. And it'll, it'll start to auto-fill also. And then tab will let it auto-complete. <clears throat> oh, you're trying to highlight somebody in the chat? Uh, yeah, all things radio, yeah. K4YAG is. Yeah, so okay. it'll it'll pop up. So do at WM7, and then it'll drop down a list and pick the name out of the list. Set the frequency in the frequency tab. Okay, Don. Okay, Don. I hear you. File settings, because I did not do that. In the frequency tab. Under settings. I hear people calling you. Yeah, so if you right click on that table anywhere. Okay. Then you can insert. Okay. So I guess 7080 was already in there as a frequency that it understood. That might be it. 708. Four. And then, okay, so now you just said that all regions, all modes can use that frequency. Well, let's change that. I mean, no, it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. And this is only for foxes, folks. As a hound, you just need to change your dial to the frequency. Put your software into hound mode, change your dial frequency using your VFO on your radio, it looks like, and then start calling the fox. Now, is... Do I need to enable TX at this point? Yeah. All right. There it is. Because K5REE Randall is queued up, and now you're yep. making the first response. Okay. Okay. There we go. He probably went to sleep that, waiting for you. That frequency. Well, he probably did. And now we got Joe Brett in here, Sassin. So, you know. Joe Brett, what's up, my ginger friend? Hounds do it, too. Okay. So Don's saying that hounds need to do their frequency also. And then no foxes too. No hounds do it. No foxes. No hounds. Don, pick a side, man. Don, is it duck season or wabbit season? Wabbit season. So now I can see on my side, I can see that other people are trying to work you. This is my screen now. I can see Randall is working you. You're, you're replying to Randall plus 10. You're replying. He's replying to you plus five. You're not getting mine at all. I'm going to try calling you again. Yeah, Randall and I just finished up, but I don't see you in a little queued up box. Are you even or odd? 
I am now odd. Okay, so I need to switch to even. I, I don't have the ability to switch to even. That's a new thing, too. Yeah, I don't either. And Randall got Jim's reply. Yeah, we finally got him. All right, I see you. Call in CQ. I'm now going to jump on you and reply. Oh, I have to click over here. I was thinking it would pop up over there. This is where I've got to click is here. All right, I'm getting yeah, AA8IA. You... A -A -A. Yeah, you need Apricot, to double click on the... Apple 8 infomercial acorn. So on the left side, you see KE3QZ. Double click on him also. Yep. Just go ahead and queue him. Is that queue him? Yeah, because you can do up to four calls at once, according to oh, our man, okay. Don. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And I see you replying to AA8IA with a plus 11. Yeah, and on the bottom left, you see it says two TX two slots. So you're talking to two people yeah, at okay. once now. Sweet. And I have, I have Randall. And then N9BAV should be coming at you. Komodo Rodeo 5. Every <laughs> elephant exists. This is in honor of the smoking ape. It is. Oh, that's okay. Neat. So this is the way to FT8. I'm just queuing y'all up, and I'm sitting here. Yeah, this is definitely better for a fox. So, so on my would side, I know. So how would I know? I hear Whitney Houston in my head when I said that. Um, how would I how know? Would I... <laughs> now it's worse. <laughs> uh, and y'all, somebody talk about Skinner or something. So, um, how would I know that I want to go do this somewhere? I just have to go into hound mode and just, I mean, I, I don't understand how we would meet up. Yeah. We're, so you know, we're synchronizing our frequencies here. In this but. case, you, you are super stoked. You want to work Bouvet Island. You want to work this de-expedition. You've got a QRP radio. You're compromise antenna living in an apartment somewhere you got all kinds of things working against you so you're watching that website like a hawk you're watching the spotter page like a hawk the dx okay. cluster and you see ft8 on some weird frequency because you're an ft8 or because that's you know what you do in that kind of compromise apparently jim jim is showing his boomer tonight with all the caps lock going on <laughs> well that's don jim didn't don show his sorry boomer. sorry I, I read jim on the screen while i was looking at don's comment Don, they're confusing you and I. Yeah. So you would see it on the DX spotter page. You would see it on their website. You would see it. You'd put it okay. into ham alert for looking for the call and it would pop up. So you'd get all kinds of, your your senses would be going off. Your ham senses would be on full alert in this case. So if you look at my screen that I'm sharing, you can see on the left that Jim is multi-threading calls here. I can see the AA8IA, RR73, and the KE3QZ working and then you can see him doing k3 aas and aj9 fe so you can see a, a bunch of different things happening all at once but he's still not answering my call you're not even seeing me anymore all things radio k4 yag has never tried ft8 wow all right so we're gonna have to to break you in gently here this is this is like off the deep end of ft8 this is ft8 and then some this is like ft8 and a half ft9 almost FT8 is a lot of fun. You're definitely going to have fun with that. Let's get back to your screen because you're working a bunch of stations over there. Yeah, I haven't gotten any new ones. I'm. I think I'm finishing up my queue here with with nitrous four super fine <laughs> cat. FT8 advanced mode. So I can see why you'd want to do this uh, for sure on the de-expedition side, right? Yeah. From the Otis side, he can sit there and just, just you know, bang out contacts. Well, four this at a time. Cool. Four yeah. at a time from two radios, that's eight at a time. Yeah. I imagine if you had a flex, you could do four at a time times four slices. That's that's 16 contacts at once. Well, see, you know what's interesting? And this Dr. Taylor apparently is a witch who has made a pact with the dark forces because I, I understand basically how FT8 works. It just does um, frequency division multiplexing across the three kilohertz band range. Right. Yeah. So this is doing, this is just amazing. 
from the computer now- side of things, he's he's taking four signals because this right. is all sound card stuff. This is all audio right. inside of your computer. So right. you're taking four different tone modulations and running them on four different segments of the frequency of that three kilohertz. Right. That's what I'm saying. That is straight up witchcraft. So look at, can you see your waterfall from where you're sitting or is it out in the other shack? No, it's uh, the waterfall on the radio. The transmitting waterfall. This is it right here. Raven, you just need to be on a relatively modern edition. I'm on 254 WSJTX, but I think this has been around for a couple of years now. Can you show a screen that's got your waterfall on it? You talking to me? Yeah. Your radio waterfall, not the WSJTX waterfall on the screen. Oh, no. Because the waterfall on your WSJTX screen only does receive. You never see what you're transmitting. But I want to see four stripes on your radio. No, I don't have any way to get a camera over there anytime soon. Okay. If I had thought about it, I could have plugged in. And I'm running a radio without a waterfall, so I'm, I'm out of, I can't see it. I'm at a loss. So Steve Thibodeau is running JTDX. Steve, can you, well, you did, you just did make a contact with Jim. So yes, it works with JTDX also. Did we do a JTDX show? I think we might have. I'm going to go take a look. I don't remember that specifically. Raven, what version of uh, WSJTX are you doing? Are you running? Because this is, um, what are we on here? Two, 254 is the latest. All right, come on, you guys. Hit me. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. 7084. Don is saying, Raven, Don is saying this has been doing this for a long time, so it should be in your yeah. version. Go to your uh, file settings. I don't even know what screen Steve is showing because I'm looking. Your at screen. My... Okay. And then go to advanced and then set yourself to hound right there. Oh, there's Ron. One of the Rons, part of the Ron army. Did you do anything to call CQ again? Because you just called CQ. I didn't do anything. I just double clicked Ron when he showed up in my. Okay, cool. So four five is saying it showed that when I started. I don't know what that is. This WSJTX thing. Yeah. So four five says I understand that FT eight and other digital modes can do things you just can't do on phone, but I want to hear a human voice. Four five. There are some times for that. I definitely agree with 100% of what you say. The cool thing that I like about WSJTX is really PSK reporter because I can test something brand new. Like I can test a new antenna right away. I can change orientation of my antenna. I can point my, my beam in a different direction. I can do whatever. I don't even have a beam. Um, I can point it in a different direction and I can immediately see 15 seconds later how the world has heard me differently. And I think that is pretty awesome. And it's almost like any time of the day, somebody's going to be there to answer your call, and you're never going to get stuck in a long rag chew with somebody talking about their kidneys, problems with their right. arch supports or whatever. Their I don't kidneys, know. Kidneys, their gout, their whatever. I mean, it, it's okay. I mean, when in Rome, but I'm not that old yet. Wasn't there a George Strait song about old men talk about the weather and old women talk about old men? Was on, it George in Strait? ham radio, they talk about, yeah, I think it was George Strait. My wife made me go to a concert when we were dating. All Country Things Radio, my really thing. K4YAG wants to know if you can use an SDR for this. Yes, you can use an SDR for this. And usually there's a way to pipe your SDR software over to WSJTX so that it mm-hmm. can decode what you're hearing. So if you take your SDR and tune it to 7084 right now, you should be able to hear it all. Do the thing, nerds. Smash the like button. And Phil's Phil's right with a with a noise floor that high. WSJTX is a great way to go. Now, yeah. something that Steve has talked about before, and me, um, probably on this show or on the FT8 off, maybe back in the day. 
a lot of people get all religious about FT8. No, oh, you don't need to run it 100 watts, and you should run it at like 20 watts. FT8 is a weak signal mode, not a low power signal mode. So, you know, you're supposed to run your radio at the minimum power to get the message through. So I'm not going to play FT8 at 20 watts unless, you know, I'm trying to just see how well I'm getting out or something like that. I'm in this to make contacts, and I feel right. that the minimum amount of power required is where the knob goes to 11 on the <laughs> radio. It is a weak signal mode, not a low power mode. So you're right. supposed to be using good ham radio operator practice of using the least amount of power to make the contact. But right now, I'm running 110 watts, and I cannot contact Jim. Right. So I need more power. More power. Oh, I got a new one popped up here. I got more power, but I need, was it me? No, it's KC8RV. Kilo Charlie 8 Romeo Victor. Tio, I was just meaning for testing new equipment or changes you make using the SDR for that. Yes, you can definitely use the SDR for that. And Ron is correct. This does not use interwebs at all. Nope. And what's weird is Steve and I are, I guess you're a little bit west of me by maybe a hundred miles or so. And then about, oh geez, probably about 1200 miles north of me, I guess. And we've actually had voice QSOs before, but it's never real strong between us. Yeah. And FT8 now we've done multiple times. So it's kind of weird that I'm not picking him up tonight. Well, we already did one contact to verify that we could. Yeah. Phil. Phil, I apologize about that radio, man. Uh, Phil, I apologize. Sweet. So the other thing you have to worry about with FT8 and your radio is the duty cycle. It is a very high mm -hmm. duty cycle mode. For 15 seconds solid, your radio is transmitting at all of the power that you tell it to. And if it right. can't handle that, then you're going to start burning up some parts. I am running 110 watts out of a 1996 radio with a big old fan on the back of it. And... I don't think it's kicked in yet. It's pretty loud when it kicks in. And the 7300, I know, and I believe the 7610, I'd have to reach over there and change the menu, has a temperature gauge in it. And that is a good indicator that maybe you need to turn the volume down from 11. It does. I ran the 705. I made 400 and some contacts in a weekend on the 705 on FT8. And that was the first time I had ever seen the temperature gauge on the 705 change colors. It runs from red to, to blue, I think. I think it runs backwards color scheme. Maybe it runs from blue to red. Yeah, it runs from blue to red. And it got yes. just a little purple. I was like, this is this is a new color I've never seen before. I, I've never seen purple on mine. And I'm I'm just I keyed mine over to the gauge and uh, it's looking fine. I mean, it's still about five bars of blue is all it's showing right now. So Jim is not answering me. I'm going to move back to hound mode. I'm going to go back down to 7080. I'm going to halt you. I'm going to go to settings, advanced, fox. I'm going to go back to fox mode, I meant. My fox box Steve's, picked up. Stephen Reynolds is getting me at minus 20 in Washington. It's awesome, Steve, because we're on like diametrically opposed sides of the country. You're probably 2,500 miles or so from me, at least. Oh, there's a button on the right-hand side of your screen next to your power slider, Jim, that says more CQs. I think you need to click that button. Oh, I have three queued up that I wasn't paying attention to. More CQs. Okay, clicked. So notice here on the screen, Steve, I've got three of those CQs that showed up on my side. So I think every so often I must be dropping a CQ out there or something like you that. You are, yeah. I see N9BAV. Thank you. So I'm at 7080, working N9BAV, and Jim is at 7084. Oh, I was fighting words, Joe Brett. I agree. That's right, Joe Brett. I agree with you. You're right. 
See, the receiver is so sensitive that sometimes you got to kick in the attenuator. Yes. Speaking of attenuator, and make sure mine's not on. Change my. Now you're making me paranoid. HSD. I'm looking at everything over here. Well, see, I'm running a non-normal radio for me. I'm running a, a vintage radio. There we go. And Kenwood recommends for data modes to have the AGC set to fast. And I do not have it set to fast. And that's what I've got mine set on on the, on the ICOM as well as is fast. Yeah, you should run it with none, but some radios don't allow you to do that. K8CRV, welcome, Xmas Mommy. We were talking about you being one of the like three females that watches the channel. Thank you for being here. Fantastic. And we don't just appreciate that you're female. That's not the thing. It's like we're we're trying to spread this hobby, you know? Yes. There's kind of a stereotype of ham radio operators, old dudes. Of course, Chuck's not here now, so we can talk about old dudes. Oh, Christina. That's the other lady that comes in on our streams. Christiana, Christiana, yeah. Christiana, Christiana. Hey, Dan, thanks for the QSO. So if you guys missed the show on Saturday, which I'm sure you've figured out by now, we had on Otis, and I don't remember Otis's call sign. Otis is going to be going on the Bouvet D Expedition in February, uh, which is pretty much in the middle of literally nowhere. Um, it is at 54. Four degrees south and three degrees east latitude, which puts it deep in the South Atlantic Ocean. Um, the closest landmass to Bouvet is probably McMurdo in Antarctica, I would guess. I haven't looked at a map for that much. But anyway, so they're packing up. How many people did Otis say they were taking down there? How many operators? Uh, I don't remember, but it was lots. Yeah, there. So, go ahead. Real quick, John's asking you to increase your RX gain. He can't go over ten watts, but he hears you. So John can hear you, but you can't hear him. Okay, as soon as I quit transmitting, hang on, hang on. It's going to be a lost reboot. That's not. That's not fair. You can't say that until after. <laughs> Want to make sure that everything goes okay, well John, and smooth for them. So anyway, so they are, um, they've been training for this for two years. And I mean, this isn't like a bunch of rich serious just training decided to drive a boat down to the middle of nowhere. This is like mountain climbing, um, working on a glacier, ice climbing, operating, whatever. Obviously the radio side, physical conditioning, psychological evaluations, physical examinations to make they sure got they're multiple not, doctors. Yeah. Multiple doctors. Bouvet is 8,000 miles from here to the middle of Bouvet Island from Alabama. So from Steve's, it's more like 9,200 or so. And uh, it's pretty intense what they're doing. And they're going to be living on this rock in tents for three or four weeks. So they, and they are still um, working on funding for their, um, their operation. Woo, woo, Dan Wiley, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you very much, it. Dan. Memberships, there is a join button directly below, and that helps us continue to invest time and effort into the channel to bring you fantastic content like how to fox and hound in FT8. Right. And Stephen Reynolds, you're right. It might be a lost reboot. <laughs> Raven, thank you. Yes, we're not a, always a bunch of crotchety old guys. Um, I met Raven at Huntsville. She is very nice. She's our kind of people. She's very smart. She's probably person. actually better than us, to tell you the truth. Well, she's so, Navy, and so that's like a cut above, pretty yeah. much. All Things Radio, K4YAG. Yes, sir. My oldest son has taken a liking to radios, getting him started on GMRS. Your oldest son, you know this. Your oldest son, I'm talking about, I'm, t I'm saying this for everybody that's watching this on Team Replay, because everybody here already knows this, but your oldest son can operate your radio under your call sign. So go do some parks on the air, go have some fun, go work some rare stations, some special events, whatnot. And then your boy's going to be like, how do I, how do I get a QSL card with, with my call sign on it? 
well, son, you got to get a call sign. Then, then you got it. You got them hooked. I think they are going to be documenting in a bunch, Stephen. Yes, they Reynolds. are. And Steve, Steve Thibodeau, yeah, yeah, it's a camp out. I asked, uh, we asked Otis what the temperature was there, and it's about going to be, a, they're in this middle of summer. <laughs> about 15 Maybe degrees warmer than my house. <laughs> right. Now, and no lie, yeah. that's true. And he's looking, they're looking at daily highs of around freezing, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, um, zero for our non-freedom unit people. Yes. So you can actually go on YouTube and look up older de-expeditions, and they actually did some pretty high production value, you know, VHS quality de-expedition stuff filming when, because at the time that was the quality. I'm not, I'm not making fun of it. Like when you see it, that's as high quality as you're going to get because that's what they had at the time. So aim high. James and Jim, Air Force brothers. What is Jim's call sign again? It's KN4YCD. Kazakhstan, Yakutsk, for. Wait, no, that didn't work out right. No, that didn't work at all. <laughs> I missed the end. Only Abe can do that. <laughs> so, all things radio, we we need to have a talk here, my friend, because I I did something. I was totally asleep when I was at Tech. The six meter band and the ten meter band are available for you for FT eight and for some voice contacts in certain portions of the band. And I did not know this. It was also the bottom of the solar cycle. So I kind of have a pass on that side as well. But you can operate your radio on 10 meter FT8. And 10 meter FT8 right now gets me from Northern Wisconsin into Brazil. So that's a pretty good distance for you to make a contact on. And uh, you should join us over on Toad's Discord. There is a link in the description down below. And we will certainly help you out in any way we can to make this more understandable and more accessible for you because we want to see more people on the air. Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. Very funny. I was thinking Kazakhstan, Narnia for Yakutsk, Crimea, Dogwood. I don't know. So I'm doing 16 QSOs. My rate is 16 QSOs. I guess that's 16 per hour. Well, they quit talking to me. So I, you know, I'm feeling kind of lonely. It's okay. You can come down and talk to me. Because some for some reason I couldn't reach you. Twenty five watt mobile six meter radio that is fantastic, but I haven't got my hands on a ten meter yet. No, twenty five watts is actually fairly amazing for doing FT eight work. Yeah, but the um the six meter band is they call it the magic band because it's only open a little bit here and there, and when it is, it's like oh I got to drop everything. Like wedding anniversary, no six meters is open. Chuck did this through the middle in the middle of a coffee and ham radio stream for us. He just disappeared on us. Got gotcha, you, Don. Chuck probably forgot what he was doing and just wandered away. Who knows? Yeah, and Joe Brett is right. K5YVY says, go ahead and get that HF rig and use the 10 meter on it, then strive to get that general extra to use the rest of it. And that is absolutely correct. Oh, yeah. I had my radio before I Phil had my tried. license. Nothing because illegal you, about listening. That's right. And if you spend the money on the radio, now you have some incentive to get yourself in gear and get yourself motivated, you know, to get your license done. Absolutely. So he's looking at an 891. That is a fantastic radio. Mm -hmm. um, you will need an external sound card in order to get onto FT8 with that radio or an external sound interface cable and maybe some, it depends on your computer setup and your environment, maybe some noise reduction type stuff, but definitely message me on Toads, message any of us on the Toads Discord. Again, there's a link in the description below and we'll get you all set up with that radio. No problem. Because I have one. It's a fantastic radio. I've had one. It's a great radio. John, I tried. I don't, uh, I haven't seen you come in here, buddy. Now I've the fan to... on my radio is kicked in. I've got the gain up most of the way. The digi rig, what's that other one? Um, the signal link. Either yep. one of those will work. Yep. I have There's a digi. A... I have a digi rig on my seven hundred six, and I had a, I had a sing signal link on the eight ninety one. Good early morning, Jonathan. Yeah, I guess it would be early morning over oh, there. Oh, I guess it is. 
Well, and what, John, amateur what a better radio way to start is your day. over there too. That's right. So, is it there like one o'clock? Uh, yeah, one twenty a.m. Something like that. I am still um yep. pounding, y'all. So that is a that is a fantastic deal right there. So the. G90 has a built-in tuner and it has a waterfall and it has a Morse code decoder going for it. 20 watts is kind of a sweet spot that does some amazing stuff where like 10 watts, you'll be hating radio until you learn how to do it better. And at 100 watts, you won't have any problem at all. Been there, done that, my friend. But the 891 is a good radio. You won't have any problems with that. We did a... Um... WB7 BOW, I see ya. We did a Plus coffee and ham radios episode on the thousand dollar ham shack, and that was my choice. And I didn't didn't want to get the rest of y'all pick an eight ninety one. No, so, besides me. No. So I was gonna pick a. I was gonna base mine around the the G ninety, and then Ape was in the back chat going, "Yeah, I got something special." I'm like, "Oh, now I got to one up that bastard." <laughs> <laughs> I picked an eight ninety one because it's a it's a very good radio. It's small. It's a good price. It's not brand new technology. It's been out for a while. It's a great radio. It works fine. They've sold about a bazillion of them. You LMC's in the house. Love easily. that 891. And I think you can buy them. Um, somebody in one of the chats, one of the servers on Discord, I don't know if it was Josh or oh. Clubhouse, oh. was selling an 891 for a really good price. This is a tough call right here. 891 or 857. I mm, I would go with the 857 because it's all mode. You can get two meter and 70 centimeter out of that, can't you? That was what I was going to ask. I don't know. I think I think you can. I think it's their 100 watt all mode radio portable where the 891 is only HF and six meters. Donna, yeah. I, I saw you and I answered, but I don't. I don't think we ever got it to work all the way. And there is an 857D for sale on Toads right now that I am trying my best not to buy. Our friend Bo, the Lion Hawaiian, KH7FC, is selling it. Oh, yeah, he's selling one. That's right. $800, FT857D. Ah, I want that radio. I got too many radios right now. I know I shouldn't say that out loud. Well, I'm here to make you a deal. Uh oh. I'm you're going to gonna give me a good deal, deal on Bose Radio? <laughs> no. I will take your K2 and then you can use that cash to buy the, eight, the 857. You see that, Jim? Is that the dingus, the SSB piece? This is the K2 SB. Where's my focus? There it is. So I, I got it. I just got to plug it in and, and verify that it works and fix it if it doesn't. So did you get it used? Yeah, I got it used. Okay. But look at that crystal ladder filter right there. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right there. I mean, I think I think we got a deal going. I don't know. I want to put this in and play with it and, and do some more stuff with it. I've already done a couple of things with it, which were pretty cool. Um, but we just got to keep on keeping on. I like her. Can you never, never have, have too many either. radios. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to get like Don. My my problem is that I want to be able to operate them all as well. So I think, and, and so don't get me wrong. The reason why I, I don't want that radio is because I have a couple that I haven't touched. I want to get those. I want to get my hands all over those. And then get them moved on and then get another radio to replace it. Cause I do want all the radios, just not all at the same time. And jam scan saying, you do any vids on the K2? I have, um, and I have some more in the pipeline that are coming out. I've got some video on how much power it puts out. I took the tuner apart. I took the radio apart, but, uh, there's, there's not enough hours in the day to get it all done. What antenna is recommended for an HF rig next Saturday? Uh, Josh ham radio crash course is going to be doing some giveaways of the, uh, Cartana right. Artemis Cartana Apollo, Apollo and Mercury. Apollo. Yeah. 
you're the marketing guy. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the best antenna would be the one to get Saturday. We're working furiously. You know, Jim and I are whipping as fast as we can, and Chuck is working as hard as, as he can to get them all built. He has to stop and take Geritol every so often. Yeah. I have a 60-foot uh, dipole already up for shortwave. So that would work out great and get yourself a tuner with it, and you'll be fine. We, um, what was I going to say? Oh, Steve said next Saturday, it's probably being pedantic and a difference in where we're from, but I would call that this coming Saturday. Next Saturday is the Saturday. See this, I agree with you, Jim, and, and I agree that you're being pedantic as well. Um, this is the argument that I always had. It is, in fact, the next we Saturday. We do this to each other all the time, even in the chat. This is me and Steve. But it always means, and I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you again, so like, hold on to your, I like, know, you know, I get, know. Your, get your heart attack medicine ready. But everybody colloquially uses that to mean the Saturday after the coming Saturday, the next Saturday, not the coming Saturday. Oh. <sighs> I would see. I didn't even throw in colloquial because I was going to. Then I thought, well, I'm going to confuse. That's too many big Steve words in a row. Yeah, that, right. But like, I'd ask my mom, "What time is it?" Half past. Half past what? <laughs> There's no clocks outside. Link dipole for one sixty. Exactly right. Do Steve, it. Steve stole an Elecraft out from under me at at Hamfest in Huntsville. I did. I'm not hearing anybody. I am on 7080 in Fox mode. So y'all need to move your radios up to 7080 and contact me because I'm putting out my CQ. I went dead. Jim, are you getting anybody on 7084? Uh, I know I canceled it and I went back to regular FT8. Oh, okay. This is another fast nuggets. We, we got this thing done right out of the, out of the box. Oh, heck it's only 730. Jonathan, yeah, thanks, Phil. That was it, Jonathan. Somebody just mentioned a link dipole. All things radio. Yes. The Mercury, which we sell, is yes. a linked dipole. Now we have it cut pre pre planned for. It's like 40, 20, 17, and 10 or something like that. It's in the 15, instructions. 40, 20, 15, and 10? No, that's the NFED half wave. Okay. But we sell a link dipole. We that's do. A, that's a great choice as well. And uh, the NFED is pretty much you can run it without a tuner. The link dipole, if you cut it right, you can run it without a tuner. Yeah. So. Raven is asking, is Elecraft still having trouble getting parts and pieces? Yes, because I wanted this K2SB as a kit to build for you guys on the channel. But I waited for two months, and then this one popped up on eBay. I snagged it. Everybody's having trouble with parts. And when is the fan dipole coming out? Chuck is Chuck is trying to build something else right now. He's hard to corral. Is 35 high enough for an HF dipole? Yes. The rule of thumb is half a wavelength off the ground of your frequency of interest. However, run that antenna wherever you can get it in the air and be amazed at how awesome it is. I have made contacts halfway across the U.S., with an antenna that's three feet off the ground. So three feet, 35 feet, 300 feet, it's all good. And you'll be amazed. I mean, is it the most optimal solution? No, but it's better than none, you know? So let me tell you all a little story while we're kind of at a lull here. And I, I'm not saying anything sketchy on their part, mostly. I got... A gadget from MTC Radio, which is cool, and we've got a video coming out on it. But they also have a mystery box thing going on. And <laughs> this is a warning from Uncle Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and and Richard is saying it's a mystery box of new in box factory sealed cases of gadget. He was vague because it's a mystery box, right? I expect vague. So I expected to get, you know, four sets of headphones or, you know, I don't know, a case of LDG tuners. I mean, Ooh. Brother, has to, brother has to have a dream, right? Goals, man, so, and goals. So, so this came the other day, I think it came Friday, and I was so excited because my, my dingus that I ordered was in the package. And then there was another very large box, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And I look at the return address. Because it had my name on it, so I knew it wasn't something. It wasn't shoes or anything that Mrs. Perry bought. 
and it's a very heavy box. And I'm like, what did I buy that was this much? And I, I look at it and it says MTC radio. And I'm like, oh, this is my factory sealed stuff. It could be a case of 7,300s. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Brother's got to have a dream. So I pop the lid on the Could box imagine? and I open it up. And the first thing I see is a um, flat panel TV wall mount. And I'm like, huh, I don't really need that. I've got all the ones I need. And then I move that box out of the way. And then I see another flat panel TV wall mount. And I move that box out of the way. And then I see, say it with me, campers. Another flat panel have, TV wall mount box? I have six six flat panel tv mounts so hit him up on toads he's going to be selling them for real cheap i will sell them for ten dollars plus shipping and i will find the cheapest way to ship it to you i mean they probably weigh 10 to 12 pounds i would guess i haven't tried to run postage on one and figure out what it'll run for shipping but i will literally sell them for ten dollars these are rated for tvs up to 42 inches that's the official specs but an engineer wrote that, so we know there's probably about 40% fudge factor built into that. So I'd suspect it can hold the 55 just fine. These are not full motion mounts. These are just the, like this or like that. A little tilty. That's about it. So if you need a flat panel mount, hit me up on the toad. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I'm not going to throw them away. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> But they're going to sit out in my shop in the storage section for the next 20 years. And then my wife will go, or my nephew or my daughter will go in 20 years. Why the hell was he keeping these? So Lou wants you to hold on to those for Huntsville Ham Fest. He'll pick them up from you. Brother, I still got them. He still will, yeah. I probably still will. Jim James is really slow on selling things. They will not fit in a USPS box. He's he's fast on shipping when you buy, but he's really slow on letting you know what he's got for sale. So I, I have, have moved the back box to they were regular in. FT8, 40 meters. Yeah, that's where I am. But this is this was fantastic. I mean, the, this software just does most of the stuff for you in terms of making the, the actual individual contact itself it's up to you to figure out the maximum usable frequency for the day figure out how much power to use where to point your antenna which contact's going to be better than the other contact and then figure out what your goals are for using wsjtx and one of the things you can do is you can try and work every grid on the earth notice i said grid which would you know indicate a square flat shape as opposed to a round shape can't have a grid on a round thing they're hyperbolas man yeah so one of the things that we did a while back was we had a competition where we tried to make as many contacts as we could in a limited time frame and that makes you real choosy on which contacts you want and certain contacts had certain weights and all kinds of stuff and we are coming up with a new idea we're looking for a software developer and we are language agnostic it just has to run on the internet right so we can contact it and then we'll have the new thing set up. So if you are a software developer, then reach out to me on Toad's Discord and we will sign the non-disclosure agreement and the non-compete agreement and we'll take it from there. Well, then then it goes over to security and then we vet them through our security services. Full background check, drug screen. Right. Eight yeah. panel drug screen? Uh, no, a 20 panel. 20, oh, okay. If they're taking too much Tylenol, we're going to know about it. We will, yeah. Is well, a quarter wavelength in, in height Huntsville. used for Nevis? So Nevis is a is a generic term. The closer you get to the ground, the more narrowly focused your your signal is going straight up. So if you're if you're a quarter if you're a half wave off the ground, then your signal is going to be going out across the horizon. And if you are down and down and down, you can run your antenna right on the ground if you want it. I don't recommend it. You probably make less contacts, but you're going to narrow your your bounce, so it's going to go up. And then turn around and come right back down. So you're going to be talking to your neighbors, which is a good thing sometimes. Sometimes you want to do that. So Nevis is just anything that I believe it's anything that's below a half wavelength is generically called Nevis. But there probably is some specifications out there. And, you know, some people say Envis on that. And I'm an I'm an Envis guy. So so I had it was my father's father's sister's 
husband. So my great uncle, he had this talent. He could just rattle off any word he ever wanted to say backwards instantaneously. And so he called me Nevitz all the time, which is my name said backwards. And I had no problem with it. I thought it was awesome. And he could have an entire conversation with you backwards. And so anytime I see that, I think of my uncle. So it's Nevis to me. Near vertical incidence, skywave propagation. Yes. I just think it's also awesome. I, I use near vertical incidence, skywave propagation. What do you use? That's right. Oscar Meyer wieners. <clears throat> Envis. Airball. So I don't know, Jim. What do you think we should do next? Uh, I don't know. Is that a trick question? Any questions from the chat? I've been kind of watching the chat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of interest in uh, what I'm going to do with all these damn flat panels I have. <laughs> well, I mean, how many TVs do you have? Uh, Coming up on Black Friday. I'm good, man. I just put in a 55 behind me. You can't see it because of the green screen. That's going to probably be a, I'm going to probably ditch the green screen at some point when this is all done back here and it'll look, you know, like the bridge of the enterprise or something. I don't know. Or I'll put up a giant coffee and ham radio or TO where, logo or something on it. Where is my signal? Phil says, yes, where is your signal? Phil, I, I need more information. while we're waiting on that quarantine Catholic, he's not here to defend his craziness. So yes. I'm going to talk bad about him. The best antenna analyzer for the money is any rig expert. They are compact handheld battery operated. You can put rechargeables in them. They will recharge through USB on the bigger models. The stick models come with built in rechargeables. They're made that way. I've had several, um, the AA55, I think, is the the cheapest one at the moment, and you can probably grab hold of it for 200 or less, which means you can't do UHF, VHF work with it, but it will cover all of HF. And for a lot of people, that may be all you care about because VHF and HF frequencies you can receive and transmit on a, a coat hanger, rusty or not. HF gets a little more complicated. Um I've had the Rig Expert Stick Pro, which goes all the way up to 600 megahertz, and it runs around 350, I think. And these are non Black Friday prices. And then last year, Gigaparts had the AA1400, which goes up to 1.4 gigahertz. So HF, VHF, UHF, all the way up to to 1.4. And I got it for four ninety nine. So I have mm -hmm. sold my other rig experts. Now a certain primate, whose name rhymes with Schmape, <laughs> is all about some nano VNAs instead of a rig expert. But I really like the rig because they're cheaper. The nano VNAs are absolutely cheaper. Yes, and and they will do what you need. They're about but fifty I, bucks for a, a two and a yeah. half inch screen nano VNA, yeah. hundred bucks for a four inch screen nano VNA. And if you like looking at a teeny weeny screen and clicking on a teeny weeny screen while you're standing out at your antenna in ninety five degree weather trying to get everything tuned, or fifteen degree weather, or in yes, in damn it, in Steve's case, in fifteen Always degree weather. Jim. So the Rig Expert is self contained, handheld. It works great. You can drive the whole thing from the menu on the front without having to have a stylus and your splaining glasses on. There's also software available for it too, so you can. Jim, also I'm use sensing it. a whole lot of bitterness. No, I'm not bitter. I'm just. It's a better deal. I really think it's a better buy. It's less frustrating. I can use a Nano VNA. I have both of them available at my fingertips, and I will not grab the VNA to go mess with right. the antenna. I won't. So Outside. the Nano VNA does the does the Rig Expert, and I'm I'm not hating, I'm not trying to harsh your mellow here, man. But does no, no, the no. Rig Expert do the inductance measurements and the time domain reflectometry? And... Yes. Okay. So you're the gonna be you're gonna be spending a little bit more. The only thing the RE doesn't do is anything that's a through port measurement, any of the S2 measurements. Yeah. S S21 or S22. I'm because still waiting for them to come out port. with the with the mic microscope. The nano VNA, the tiny SA, and the microscope. That's what I want. Right. There you go. 
So I think I think a nano, uh, a rig expert is I personally feel a lot easier to use than a nano VNA. It costs more, yes, but I think it's a way more polished so, product. So Raven, you only have to calibrate the nano VNA if you are a YouTube content creator because if you don't, <laughs> everybody in the chat will argue with you and make fun of your poor deceased mother and all kinds of other stuff. You can just go in after you calibrate it the first time you receive it and it comes with the calibration standards. You can come in and just recall that saved calibration and you're fine. So. Yeah. And you can recalibrate the rig expert if you want to either way. I, I will need a new bag and I will be up to the challenge. I can't wait for that microscope. I think that would just be awesome. $50 well, I mean, hundred megahertz oscilloscope. Hmm. Fifty dollar, hundred kilohertz oscilloscope. I mean, the O one, that's a great scope for two hundred bucks. Of course, the only that's problem that little with portable that $200, one. The yeah, handheld, yeah, that's a hundred megahertz and two ports, but you're getting perilously close to benchtop scope money at that point for another hand tech or an O one. You're probably a hundred dollars off benchtop scope cash. Yeah. So once you calibrate it, Raven, go in and save the calibration that gives you five nice. different choices to save it in. And so the the good part about being able to calibrate it is that you are in control of what's going on as opposed to with the, the uncalibrated units, the calibrated at the factory units. Um, you don't really know where it was calibrated. So I can calibrate it for 14074 for the FT8 frequency on 20 meters. And then I can test an antenna in that range, as opposed to just calibrating it for 160 through six meters and, you know, a hundred points of data between 160 and six is spread out awful thin. Right. And jam scan, if you, yeah, he's right. If you, if you don't change anything out in the setup, there's no need to calibrate. The right. whole point of calibration is remove to remove the things. the things. So, they talk about the words they'll use is called a reference plane. So if you're hooking up a device under test and you're using the little cable that came with it and you've calibrated open short loads at the end of that cable, save that. That's a calibration. And there's multiple spots for those, right? Yeah, five. Five spots. So you can have spot one is just your little cable that came with it. Spot two, you might have to put on an adapter to go to uh an SO239 or an N connector and save that as a calibration. Right. Yeah. So the but other thing Steve, I can do Steve is right. Safety yeah. Sally will get all over YouTubers for not calibrating. If you don't, if you don't time. calibrate on a video. Yeah. Every the other time. thing I can do is I can actually plug my nano VNA in at my desk to my DX commander way off in the field over there and put my calibration standards on at the end way over right. there. And then now I have a hundred and some feet of RG213 calibrated out teared out of my antenna analysis plan. So I can go hook up another antenna to that and then compare it to the DX commander without that coax being part of the reference plane. Right. And that's RG, the point of calibration. RG8X or RG174 for VHF. RG174 for VHF, man. I can't yeah. even argue with you. I actually use RG174 for HF, but don't tell anybody. I do it because it's lighter weight. It's easier to pack. It's smaller, blah, 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 blah. And I deal with it. So don't let anybody ham shame you. You use whatever gear you have and you get on the air and That's you make right. contacts. And then you start solving problems. You want to work Hawaii? Then you have to ham up. You got to up your game. So I had somebody ham shame me when I first got into it and I didn't like it. And it, it actually set me back probably a year and a half, two years in the, in the whole ham hobby. So I am like, you know, put your G5 RV up three feet off the ground and work half the planet. Right. Have, have as much fun as half the planet's going to allow you to have, which is quite a lot of fun. Going back to Raven, I want to point out one thing on the nano VNA and the rig expert debate. And this is not part of the debate, just FYI. There is software available for the Rig Expert called AntScope, which is free and it's on the Rig Expert website. And there is software available for the Nano VNA called um, VNA Saver, I think that, or is it Nano VNA Saver? Nano VNA Saver. Nano VNA Saver, which does the same kind of things that AntScope does. And I think Ape told me that AntScope or VNA Saver will work with either one. Yes. <clears throat> but the the software runs 
The Ant Scope runs on Mac and Windows that I personally know of. It may run on Linux. VNA Saver runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And what those programs allow you to do is drive the device completely with your mouse and a computer screen. It allows you to do your calibration that way. It allows you to save stuff. It also gives you, in my case, a screen I can freaking see. So oh, now the, the downside to that is if you're out at your antenna, you're going to have to schlep a laptop or something out there with you. But, but the software for either, either device, whichever one you get, the software adds a whole lot more value to it. And, and you're shorting yourself if you're not using it. So I had to look this up. Justin is K -A -K -4 -Y -A -G's K4YAG's name. So Justin is asking, 125 foot of RG8X running from the shack to the tower and was told you're losing half your power. Maybe, maybe not. You're going to lose some power, probably not half um, between the, the radio and the antenna. But where else would you put it? If your antenna is only 50 foot away and you're coiling up 125 foot of cable, yeah, you're losing a lot of power for a variety of reasons, not just the cable. If your cable's straight and a straight run over there and that's the only place you can put up your antenna, you're losing zero power because if you can't put your antenna anywhere else, you wouldn't be on the air. You know, like you got to put things in perspective. And yeah, same thing, 25 foot of RG-174. I've done lots of park activation, parks on the air activations with RG-174. Easy to pack, no problem at all. I've also uh, it, hauled out 50 foot of RG-213. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah. I would not I would not take RG-213 on the parks in the air. <laughs> I would not. That is That is way more work than I want to do. This is supposed to be fun, not basic training, man. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, Don, like, and I, I don't know if you mentioned this because I was coughing and reading something else, but the the RG8X is okay at HF frequencies. Mm -hmm. Where that loss comes in is as the frequency goes higher, then that loss in dB per 100 feet increases and gets pretty radical at VHF and UHF frequencies. So your HF antenna all the way in the backyard hundred feet away on RG8X, yeah, you're losing some power versus RG213, but you ain't going to be moving it, right? So use RG213 if you can, and if you can't, then use RG8X and rock on anyway and talk to that half of the world. Yeah. I mean, my, my first antenna, and I've said this before, was a G5RV attached to an aluminum flagpole improperly 25 feet off the ground in an inverted V with coax that had been chewed on by rodents and was at least fourth hand by the time it got to me and a manual tuner and an ft891 and i talked to somebody in japan so yeah the g5rv is a lousy antenna yeah and i've got another one sitting here i'm going to do another video on it and i would never i would never ham shame somebody because you got on the air and you made that contact where if you didn't put the antenna in the air it wouldn't have happened all of that is to say that that was a very wrong way to do that and it still worked Right. You can do better. Don't get me wrong. Let's let's get you on the air first. Oh yeah, you can always do better. I mean, the best would be LMR um what is it? The not LMR 400. There's one past that if I can't I don't know. We'll go with LMR 400. <laughs> LMR 400 for Messi and Poloni. I think they have a different number for it, whatever. Uh you know, run into a tower that's that's tall enough you can hang a 160 meter half wave off of it. That would be best. But LMR you know, 600. LMR 600 with a directional Yagi. Put your two meter and your 440 up there. You got a six element beam at 40 meters, 120 feet off the ground with a full legal limit amplifier. And That's, your your FTDX 101 MP $12,000 radio. <laughs> right. You can always do better. But good enough covers a whole lot of ground. And, and Steve, Steve's point. Is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun doing it, you're good. Have fun. We're, we're on a live stream with 87 people watching. I'm running a 1996 radio at 110 watts. This thing has lost its internal battery. Every time I turn it on, I have to change the settings back to where I want them because it forgot it lost its memory. I'm <laughs> at uh, 100 ish, 70, 75 to 100 feet of coax and a bunch of adapters mm -hmm. and a through the wall and so on and so on. I've got a 
a tuner, a signal link, a watt meter plugged into it. I'm still making contacts. I'm okay. I'm happy. Right. And someone mentioned it. <clears throat> um, there are a bunch of coax calculators on the internet that will let you find out what the loss is on a specific type of coax. And almost all the coax sellers have data charts for their specific coax they sell. So M and P's chart may not agree with something from DX engineering for a given type of coax, whatever. I Don, don't I did not see that. And isn't RG two thirteen? Is that I have the DX engineering version of that. Yeah. That's what I have. Uh, yeah. And it, it's great. I mean, I think it's functionally the same as LMR four hundred if I if I remember right. It may not be exactly, it's close, but it's good enough. I was young enough. I called them and said, what do I do? And they said, you want some RG213, son? And I said, all right, fill me up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, when you're talking about, so my antenna, my DX commander is literally in the backyard. And because of power lines and gas tank and everything else that could be in the way, I had to run about 125 foot of cable. The, oh, the septic tank. That was the biggest thing that was in the way. <laughs> Places you don't dig. You're full of it, so, yeah. Right. I've been hearing that all my life. So I ended up running about 125 feet. I, I was going to, I have the RG8X and I was going to use that. And then I thought about it and I said, you know what? No, I intend to bury this. I'm only going to do this once. I'm putting this crap in conduit. We're going to, we're going to get at it. So. Doing nuggets on building a phasing harness. I don't know if I'm smart enough yet, Don. I don't even know what that means. Don't you have to pay extra for that? You do, you do. It's part. It comes. With, it comes free with the extra class license. So I have it right. sitting around here somewhere. See, I'm, I'm not. I'm not that fancy. Mm. So if I understand him correctly, he's talking about putting up phased verticals. So you want to get two, four DX commanders, put them up in a in a pattern, and that then the harness. Cool. The harness would be. Um, one of the antennas is delayed far enough behind in signal to account for the loss. Kevin, I saw you. I'm working to account for the um, the distance between the antennas. And Joseph VE3 GKT would be the one to talk to about that because he just finished building a dual Yagi. Oh, we did it. We got it. Here it is. Canada Joe. K7SW. Minus 19 cent plus four received. I don't know. You got more power than I do, brother. Kevin's probably got some fancy antenna up there. He's, he's testing on a new antenna from Chameleon. Kevin's got a fantastic YouTube channel, K7SW Ham Radio. Yeah. So that about wraps it up for the night. I think we've mumbled long enough. Should I connect one foot or 25 foot QDX in a park? Um, it depends on your antenna because your antenna might be your antenna. Your coax might be acting as a counterpoise. Awesome, Kevin. Right. Your coax might be acting as a counterpoise for your antenna. Uh, so it really depends. Um, but like we've been saying all along, put it up and then solve problems. So if you put it up and you can't make any contacts, you're probably getting some common mode. So put a common mode choke in, put a counterpoise in, whatever it takes. <laughs> KG2MM, we stopped doing Fox and Hound about 20, 30 minutes ago, probably. But we were on 7080 and made a bunch of contacts, and it was super easy. So as we get closer, look for a video on both of our channels. So I'm going to make Jim do one on how to do Fox and Hound quick setup. And the only reason why I'm making Jim do one is that I need a hound while I'm being a fox. And then he needs the opposite. So we'll make it happen. Actually, I'm the fox. Steve is just... Yeah. You're like Eagle One, Fox Two, Fox. <laughs> From Independence okay. Day, Randy Quaid. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to process that. I was Artemis with counterpoise. So yeah, you should be fine with with one foot of coax on that because the counterpoise is is absorbing the you know the it's acting as a counterpoise like it should be. So your coax is not that counterpoise. And I I you know I hope the professor's not watching because he'll he'll get sassy with me in the chat later if he sees this. I played with, I have the Apollo. Be awesome. And the difference is the winder, right? Between the Apollo and the Artemis, yes. Yeah. So I have the Apollo. I think I have the Apollo. Hell, I don't remember. Anyway, 
I played with it with and without counterpoise. I didn't see a whole lot of difference. How much uh, coax were you running? 50 feet. Because I had it so run in the middle of the yard. That's your answer. What that was, was happening? Counterpoise for me. Yeah. It, your yeah. coax, the, the outer shield on your coax was acting as a counterpoise, and it was far enough distance that you ran out of necessary wire like you had more wire than you needed for counterpoise and so your radio was fine okay yeah that makes sense because i'm tr I'm, tr I'm thinking where the connector comes off the shop i pulled it out in the middle of the yard where i had room to stretch it out and raise it without being near the one of the 900 power lines that i have the glory to live around and uh, I, I never saw a difference but that makes perfect sense yeah now you could run it shorter or you could put a, a choke on it a one-to-one -one on it and that would take care right. of it Right. So I've had to do that depending on where I was and what I was working on. And and sometimes it just creeps up on you no matter how long your coax is just because of situations. I want to do a, um, I've got a nine to one that I want to put up this weekend. Weekend being defined as Wednesday through Sunday for me. Right. Uh, I'm thinking about what radio to bring to Thanksgiving dinner so I can hide. I wanted to do it on my 847, but I'm going to have to use my 706 because I'm going to need a tuner on a 9 to 1. Your 706 doesn't have a tuner? No, but I have an LDG with the um, ICOM cable that will tune which, the 706. Which LDG? The, Z the Z100? Plus something. So it's got the button on the front of it. Yeah. Yeah, so take it anyway with your 847 or whatever. And then just put it into a mode with a carrier, CW or AM, key down push the button on the front, it'll tune itself, and then key up when it says it's happy. Really? Yeah. You don't need the control cable. The control cable is just an added benefit. Okay. So say that again. Run me through that one more time. I wondered in, about that, but I was a little afraid to try it. Go into a carrier mode. If you're doing FT8, just go into FT8 and hit the tune button. It'll put out yeah. noise on the wire, and then yeah. hold, in the tune, hold in the button on the front of the Z LDG Z100+, Plus, and then it'll start a tune cycle for you. If you okay. just push the button fast, it'll put the tuner into bypass mode and you won't have any tune at all. Okay. Yeah, it's the Z100 Plus. It's got a button maybe. Yeah, I know it has a button. I think it's got three buttons. I yeah. can't remember. Because you can do the same thing with the Z817. Okay. Well, that was well, that was where I was going. I was looking for a tuner for the FT847. And those are like unicorns. How much power does the 847 put out? 100. On HF. hundred on yeah. HF. Okay. And then what, I mean, that's a, that's a vintage radio. What connectors does it have on the back? I don't remember off the top of my head. I know I it's got it, two of the DIN style connectors yeah, back there. You probably have a DIN six and a DIN eight. And I think that, that DIN eight right. is going to be your tuner connector. So you might even be able to run the 817, the Z817 tuner on it. Not according to LDG. No. But, well, I didn't hmm. ask them. They don't sell anything that says 847, and I didn't feel confident enough to just wing it. We'll have to talk about it because I've got I've got an 817 tuner that I need to fix. I bought it from RNL broken for 20 bucks because I'm like, ah, challenge. Okay. I want to figure this right. out. So I want to get it fixed. And when I get it fixed and working, might be able to figure out how to get the um, the cable into your 847 because it's a it's a standard yezu style deal so yeah. every oh, every yeah. yezu radio that has that connector it is that connector you know well that's what i thought too and but thanks justin uh, again ldg doesn't really show um they're not the best at websites yeah they're not. I actually i actually had a house that was like five doors down from them i passed their factory every day on my way out to work and i was like there's no signs on the building What's that guy doing in his garage? Because he's got like twelve cars parked in the drive. What's he? What's he doing in his garage? Drug dealer. Yeah, that's where he's doing all of the design and and whatnot. Because all the stuff's built overseas, I think. Oh, I have a question for the chat: Is AS Antarctica? Because I'm seeing nine kilo two Yankee Mike calling from AS. I think it's L LL39 is the I think grid it's square. It's Asia. Hmm. If only there was a way to look up grid squares. Well, I know. I was hoping one of y'all did it so I didn't have to click and read. Steve, what tuner are you running with that? Last question, then we're getting out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is Kessler on tonight? We got anybody after no, us? No, it's and Monday. What about John? Let's communications and cigars. I checked. I don't see anything, but John likes to just go live without any 
Asia. Okay. Asia. Damn it. I thought I was getting Antarctica. Without any warning. Well, now we have conflicting information. He says it's not, um, what's it called? He says it's not Antarctica. He doesn't say it's not Asia. Okay. But um, that's how I'm interpreting Don speak for you. Bouvet Prep Man. 101. Exactly. And we're going to do this again on Thursday night um, because it's Thanksgiving Day and you know the other boys didn't want to be around for coffee and ham radios. But but Jim and I are going to represent. We're going to be here and we're going to be doing some FT8 magic. We're going to be having some fun with y'all. So get your questions ready, get them all lined up, <clears throat> come at us, and we'll even let we'll even let a few of you lucky folks on the stream. So message me and Toads if you want to get the link. I think that would be a great link. plan. Yeah, so. and as the man said, have a take and don't suck. Exactly. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome, Steve. <laughs>